making another T2LT for potential home base station use. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If the camera won't uh, misbehave, it looks like it's running a bit slow though. So I'm going to be making another T2LT antenna that I can hopefully string in the trees outside because there's some trees just outside the back of this flat where I live. So workbench is a little cluttered from ongoing projects. So got the dimensions that I require from uh, Gary CTX 104 of his 104 UK CB TV channel because um, he's uh, done a couple of this type of antenna. I've already made one and it does work all right. I have it behind me somewhere and I've got a big pile of coax here. Uh, I've got some heat shrinks, so I'm going to need that. I've also got some of the tools as well. And I'm going to go and off camera to measure this. I'm not going to measure it on camera. So, the rest of this coax I think is actually on the floor because I did run a lot off the reel because I've got a, a bit of a big reel of it. And uh, I thought I might as well make another one because I've got this uh, 3D printed choke that I showed in a short. And I've weatherproofed that with some fixative spray used for charcoal drawings, pencil drawings, that sort of thing. So I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to measure it and uh, up and do what uh, needs to be done to it. I don't think I've got any spare PL259 so I can't immediately test it, which is a bit annoying. So I'll crack on with the next stage and I shall return shortly. Okay, so I've stripped it all back at the top for the correct length and I've marked it out to the point at which I need to start winding the cable onto the choke. The choke's just behind me there. So, I'll just pause whilst I show you the stripped part. Okay, so this is the top section. This is the basically the dielectric and the internal wire inside the coaxial cable. So, it's got the top slightly exposed there, but I'm going to waterproof that up. A bit of heat shrink on top of that should keep the moisture out. Well, that's the general idea. I might um, uh, put a little tiny bit of hot melt glue on that as well, which should uh, wick into there and also help to keep the moisture out. And that will be looped over to create a tuning loop for tuning it up to make sure it's uh, resonant where it wants to be. So, next job is to wind it onto this coil here. I'm going to do that off camera as well. Right, so I've now got the choke made up. So it's five turns onto that. So there's quite a lot of cable coming off the other side, which I uh, haven't got a plug put onto it yet. So I don't believe I have any plugs lying around at the moment, which is a bit annoying. So I can't actually immediately test this, but I've got to this stage. So the next stage is to Dry waterproof all the joints, so I'm going to do that next. Okay, so I've slid this piece of heat shrink onto here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to feed this back round so I can show you this, is because I don't have any adhesive lined heat shrink, which is very annoying, I'm going to put a small amount of hot melt glue over that joint there and then heat shrink that down. So. I'm just waiting for the glue gun to heat up at the moment. That's going to probably be a little while. So I'm just going to pause again because I'm o I've only got one hand at the moment. I don't have the tripod. So I'm going to set the tripod up and I'm going to sh actually show you that part because this is the part that um, I don't believe uh, Gary includes. So we'll just pause the video there. Right, so... Here's the um, uh, bit that I want to put a little dab of hot melt glue on. So I'm just going to do that now. My glue gun has, because it's a cheap rubbishy one from Poundland, has the shortest flex known to man. So that's just going to have to be carefully rolled around there. Shouldn't really poke this with, well it's hot. There we go. Really should not do that, but you know, needs must. Yep, so there's a tiny little drop of hot melt glue on there. So the idea is that when I put the heat shrink over, which I've slid, slid down the coax, that when I heat it up with a heat gun, which I'm not going to do that on camera because the heat gun's actually quite noisy, it will, hopefully, 
melt that glue again and melt it into this heat shrink and hopefully squeeze it down a little bit. Let's see if I can get the heat shrink over now. It's a little bit of a snug fit, but it should do. And that should be fine. That hopefully will keep water out. So that's the whole idea of that, to keep water out. So I'm going to do something similar to the other end as well, because I want to keep water out of there as well. I don't want it to get in there, so it would cause more problems than it solves. It would probably just dark over or something, so I'm zoomed in a little bit, but not too far. So I'm just going to straighten the end of that out. So I'll just bring the end in there. You can see that. It's also in need of some glue. So I'm going to try and do that on camera. So I'm just going to... There's a little dab of it just coming out of there, look. And I think that should be fine. Right. That seems to be okay. Let's bring that into shot. I'm sure I can focus on that. So that's uh, on there. I'm going to put a bit of heat shrink across that. And shrink that down. The glue should go in. And that should keep the water out. No guarantee that my idea will work. But if I'm going to be using this outdoors. And it's going to rain or anything. Then, you know, I don't want water getting into it. So. I'm going to pause the video. While I heat shrink this all down. And, and I'll come back to you on that. Okay, so this is the join. Um, I'm not sure if I can turn off the fill light because I think that's causing some problems. There we go. I have to knock the exposure up a little bit so you can actually see that. See, exposure's a bit low. There we go. So that's where I've joined it in the middle. I've just pretty much crimped that down with some pliers and on the other end and bring that into shot what I've done is I've done something very similar it's not focusing on that though so because it's focused further down but we'll see if we can focus on that so you can see what I've done here as well so a similar sort of thing I've uh, put heat shrink over a little blob of hot melt in there it's all been squashed down crimped down with the pliers so yeah, water shouldn't get in that. So the next thing I need to do, and I'm actually going to, to, in homage to my other one, which I've already got, use a red cable tie, because that's got a red cable tie on the end. Not sure how that ended up with a red cable tie. But I think it was a red cable tie. It might not be now. I might have changed it for a black one. I'm going to put a red cable tie on the end of this. So I'll just pause the video while I find the, those cable ties. Right, so we've got the end here, so I need to form that into a loop. I think I'm still too far zoomed in to show you this, so I'll zoom back out a little. There we go. So I need to form that into a loop for tuning purposes, so I'm just going to fold it over by about an inch or so, I think would do it. And then pop a cable tie round. So the idea is that so the cable tie stays on. That's it. So the idea is I'm able to tune that by adjusting this loop at the end by pulling it through and I'll show you that actually. I'm doing that with it. I'm not going to crop the cable tie down, I'm going to leave that as it is. It's also quite useful because it forms a little hanging loop like that. So the next bit will be getting this on the air but I can't do that today because I don't actually have a plug for it at the moment. So, this is where I'm going to have to stop for the moment, and then I'll come back to you when I've got a plug on the end. Now, if I zoom back, focus back down to the workbench. Now, so we've got the whole antenna, which is quite unwieldy. So, I'm going to cable tie it up together by cable tying the top section first. And then the bottom section, I'm going to use reusable cable ties for this because I actually have such a thing. So, I'm going to grab one of my reusable cable ties. These are quite useful. I think I got these from B&M home stores. 
and they're useful for things like this. So I'm going to coil, so the top bit's coiled up first. I haven't properly coiled it, but that's not a problem. It doesn't need to be properly coiled as long as it's coiled up enough. See my red cable ties there, which normally I'd use them for things like put it, putting onto equipment that's non-functional, like my Midland Deluxe Ready Rescue. That's not functioning at the moment. You all know what happened to that, unless you've only recently subscribed and not come across the short where I inquire about what transistor it was. Yeah, one of the transistors inside blew up after something went short circuit in there. I just hope it didn't take the synthesizer or anything out in the, the process of that, otherwise that's going to be game over, unless I can find a, what, what synthesizer it is and recover one from a scrap set. So, that's for another another video, I think. So I'm just going to try and coil up the top section of this antenna, which is going to be quite difficult because it doesn't want to coil the way I want it to coil. And also, the choke's kind of got itself caught on the tripod I've got this camera on, which is not ideal. There we go. So I'm just off the camera at the moment coiling this up because the next bit, uh, obviously, I don't want to have the whole unwieldy antenna getting involved. And also, ooh, <laughs> it's twisted itself around the input and output of the choke, which is really not great. Uh, when things go wrong, eh? You know what I'll do, I'll just hang the choke off there and I'll find the other end. So uh, that's the antenna end, so I'll just stick that over on the floor. It's the other end. It's still actually halfway out the, the, the shack door. It's a hell of a long run of coax. So I've made the antenna, but on the other side of the choke, this is the coax on the other end. Okay, so you're seeing on the bench now the coax on the other end of the antenna. That's what this, this whole pile of coax is, is coming off the other side of the choke. The choke's hung on the tripod at the moment. I'm just going to gently remove that. And so I obviously don't want the choke untangling. The antenna itself is on the floor. The top section's been coiled. And I've used reusable cable ties for that, so as you can see here. And there's a red cable tie in the top there for the loop. I'm not sure if I showed you that. Might have done or might not have done. That makes a convenient tuning and hanging point. If I hang it with something non-metallic. There's a reason for that. <laughs> I'm sure you know. So, with the, with, the, with the joins waterproofed, it can be used outdoors. With the, the spray that I used on the choke, it can be used outdoors. So I'm just coiling up the other side of the antenna now. Because I can do that with a reusable cable tie. It's the reason why I bought them. Because I don't have to cut cable ties off all the time. And they just live on my bench over there somewhere. There we go. So basically they're like your normal cable ties except they've got a releasing tab so that you can release them. And, and that's that. So that's the antenna now cable tied. But the feed line into it is quite long. In fact it's very long and that's been done on purpose to allow me to have the radio as far away from it as possible. I'm not sure whether that'll have any effect on it but we'll see. So it goes on up on the mast. The radio can be any distance away from the mast or even in the trees because that's where I want to put this and then the radio is going to be in here. So at my operating position at the moment there isn't actually a working CB. I'm just looking over there at the moment. I've got two CBs opened up for other reasons. Um, my Midland 38 with the power switch that doesn't work and uh, a York JCB861, which you'll have seen the, the PA calls from in a previous video. Um, 
There's a Thunderpole T600, I think, somewhere on the floor. I've just put down there out of the way. There's a Midland 77095 there as well. That's mine, which I've uh, tuned up as best I can. Oh, and that's Uber, so I'll have to stop now. I'll catch you soon. Right, so I'm back after doing three Uber runs, and this is the feed line, which I've just coiled up whilst I'm waiting for the kettle to boil to make a cup of coffee. And, yeah, that's quite a lot of feeder for, for that antenna, which, well, the plan of action is to put it in the trees outside, which I can see out this window and bring the coax across, so I am kind of do need a long longish feeder for that. It's not going to be too, too lossy at those frequencies, but it should work. The next bit I need to do is put a plug on it. I don't have a plug at the time of filming this bit, but I should have by the time I film the next bit. So, hopefully, I'll have a plug by then. Right, so, come back to the new T12T I'm making. It's been a while. I've been doing a lot of other things in between, as you're probably aware, including doing a video for a review on the 2023 edition of the Thunderpole T800, which I'm also in the process of making that at time of filming this one. So, and I might be using this antenna on that one, but you'll, you'll know by now if I have or I haven't, because I think that one's going to be first, because obviously I've got to get that radio back to Thunderpole quite, quite possibly. I don't think I'll be allowed to keep it. So... I need to put a plug on the end of this. Obviously, I can't just connect it like that, can I? <laughs> As you will, will know. And it's got the long lead on it that I wanted on it, rather than a short stub and a plug, which is what's on my existing one of these. Because I had to cut that down because it was nicked. Um, uh, and I found that out when I was doing um, one of these anniversary nets for... Um, I think it was legal AMNSSB on on CPT in the UK. Um, so I tend to use crimp on plugs for these rather than rather than the solder ones because I have more luck with the crimp on ones usually. And I've only got two and so that means I've only got two two opportunities to get this right. So I'll need to strip this back. I do have coax strippers somewhere. I'm not sure where they are. So if I can't find them I'll obviously have to use something else. So, I'll see if I can find something to strip this wire with. We'll just show you the wire. I don't need to strip too much off and obviously need to mark where the plug's going to go. And also I need to make sure everything's on before crimping the plug down. You obviously know what I mean by that. Because it's going to be a pain because I'd have to take the choke off otherwise and I don't want to do that. So, let's get this all stripped and ready to go to put a plug on it. Okay, so I've got the wire stripped, if I can get it to focus on that. So that's sufficiently stripped for these crimp-on type plugs. I got these from Moonraker. I used to get them from a Chinese supplier, but, you know, it was quicker to get them from Moonraker. So, it's just like this little sleeve goes over the plug, plug body, which is on the desk. You might be able to see that for focus on it. Yeah, you can just say see that over there. Then it's crimped on with the crimping tool, which is underneath the heat shrink at the moment. The heat shrink's out because there's a piece of heat shrink on this. And that's pretty much it. So, I've only got two goes at this, so... I've already checked this off camera to make sure of continuity issues. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any short circuits, which is good. Because that's the issue I'd have. Let's so make sure it's all properly dressed and done. And then obviously I've got to push this through there. I'll have to cut that end bit off before I crimp it down. Because I've got to crimp that end bit down as well. I'll show you that. Uh, it's not focusing on that. Uh, will focus eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't like focusing on shiny objects. There we go. Focus on the black, there we go. So you can see how the plug's now assembled onto the cable. So it would leave me to push the braid down. There's a bit too much braid there, so I'm gonna have to trim that braid back. And might take that opportunity to look for a more reliable meter because my Red Unity UT 
58C is starting to show problems. I'm just going to focus back down on the desk so you're not looking at blurriness. So I'm going to pop that there and I'm going to go find my other multimeter because I'm probably going to need that. Right, so I've got the more reliable of my two multimeters. It was actually next to me on the on the operating position in line with the Thunderbolt 800 2023 that I've been reviewing. So just check it to make sure there's no continuity there between the center. Seems okay. Shouldn't be anything on the braid either. Nope. You notice that's just a bit of wire on the end of there because the crocodile clips come off. So I'll have to sort that out, I suppose. So I'm going to, have to trim down this braid a wee bit because there's a bit too much of it. So that's where my snips would come in very useful. I've got two pairs of snips on this bench. One that came with my 3D printer, which are looking a bit blunt and abused now. And yes, yeah, so let's give this braid a haircut to make sure it'll go over the actual connector without any of it sticking out and the, the little metal ferrule will go over it as well. So bring that into shot so you can actually see that. That would be a good idea. So too much of a haircut, a little bit of a haircut. I was supposed to do some work this morning but I had a very long telephone call last night with with the XYL and you know I think with uh, with us being separated by about 5,000 odd miles, you know, it's always nice when when one of us calls the other. Okay, so it should be okay on there. So let's see if I can get the metal ferrule, which should be down the cable somewhere. This is a very long cable. I must, I must keep re re reminding people of that, so it just plugs straight into the back of a radio. Seems to fit fine. I uh, still could use a bit of a haircut on that braid though, unless I can tuck some of it in there. Make it look nice and tidy. It's getting covered with heat shrink anyway. So, yeah, it still needs a haircut. <laughs> like I say, I only get two shots at this because I've only got two plugs at the moment. And I'm just going to give this a bit of a haircut at the bottom. off camera there. So obviously I don't want to have too many straggly bits sticking out when I crimp it down. Make it look tidy, obviously. Even though there's like I say, even though there's a heat ring going over this, I'd much rather it be tidy than look a right mess. Now to crimp these plugs on requires a hexagonal crimping tool or a hex crimping tool. Which I do have a little bit of experience of them from putting these plugs on and a previous job I once did. <laughs> yeah, I'll say no more about that previous employer. Because it turns out after I left it got worse there. So this is the crimping tool in question. Now this one I got from Maplin, I got two sets of dies, the one that came with it and another set that came from China, so I can do the bigger RG213 fitting crimp on plugs because I do have an RG213 coaxial cable in here which is useful for things like your VHF and your UHF. So what I need to do is I need to size this to make sure it fits. Now. I'm going to hazard a guess it's going to fit in the second one along, which is marked, so you can see it, it's a bit blurry. Go to the one in the middle, I'll just re release the crimping tool for you, so you can see the marking. 0.213 I think that says, so that's the one I use on these, and it's the one that seems to fit the best. So, just put it into the, into the tool, like so, bring the tool in. Because you'll have probably never seen this sort of thing before. But if you have, then that's brilliant. I'm going to see if I can turn off the 
feel like because I think that's reflecting off this. There we go. There we go. So that's the plug now inside the tool. And once I squeeze the handle down, which takes some effort, there we go. The ratchet should release. And that's the crimp made. That's now crimped on. I normally tidy that up a bit by putting the end through as well. There we go. So that plug is now on. Now it's important with these, if you're, if you're putting this onto the end of a cable that's already got a plug on it, that you put the little barrel that screws onto there on first. <laughs> on this it's not too critical if I forget that, but it does mean I have to unwind the choke further down the coax and it's quite a lot of coax. So let's find the little metal screw on part and run it down the cable and then I'll screw that on there. So that's a plug that's partly completed it's not 100% completed because there's still one job left to do. Well, there's two jobs left to do. One of which involves crimping this middle pin down to make sure the thing doesn't move. And then obviously I'll check it for continuity to make sure that everything is A-OK. -okay. What I also want to do is put some heat shrink over it. So I've slid that heat shrink over now. It's quite a snug fit, that heat shrink. And... That will then make it look a little tidier still. I would have preferred it to be black, but I don't have black in that size. Blue's the only one I've got in that size, I believe. Possibly red, but definitely blue. <laughs> so I'll heat shrink that down with my heat gun off camera because my heat gun is a bit loud. I don't have one of these fancy soldering stations with the heat pen and the... There we go. With the heat pen and the soldering iron built in. It's just a soldering station with a soldering iron, but that's fine. We don't need that for this job, this is this is nice and ideal. So before I cut that flush, I'm going to crimp that down. So I need to use one of the smaller positions in this connector. So it'll be, in this crimp tool rather, so it'll be either that one or that one, and I'm going to hazard a guess it's this one. Actually, that doesn't look as though it's going to fit, so try it in the next one along. So that's now crimped as well. Let's bring it does not like to focus on shiny items. One of the things you've got to learn with these cameras is they just do not like to focus on anything that's shiny or reflective. There we go. So that's now crimped on. I'm going to trim that back with the snips, which have eluded me. There they are. Right, so there's the snips, there's the end. I'm going to focus on that and then I'm going to chop that off there. That's now flush. So, next job. Continuity test. So I'll focus down on the meter, and it turns out that the other crocodile clips fall off it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to sort that out, I think. So, this is gonna be the fun part. Okay, so it's an open, so it's not doing anything between the inner conductor and the outer. That's fine. That's fine. So now all I've got to do is heat shrink that and then put it on the air to test it and tune it. And because I've got a radio to test as well, we're going to go up to my usual radio playground. And I'm going to check this is going to fit in the back of the meters just so that I don't look silly. So I'll just pinch this. Uh... Yeah, that's fitting fine. So I've just tested that in my... Um, uh... In, in my antenna tuner for CB radio, because I do have such a thing. Let's make, yeah, we're in focus. So, 
So now I know that it's all connected up, I've got to now heat shrink that, that, that bit there down. I mean I would have liked a heat of heat shrink to do that but unfortunately I don't have any of that. So I'll have got to use a normal heat shrink like that. So that's pretty much the antenna now assembled. So I'll get it up on a mast up at my usual playground. It's not windy so I'm probably not probably get away without guying it and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm at my usual radio testing spot and got the drive on mass stand with me. Uh, I've got the Nano VNA in the car. It's been in the car for a while. It's actually on, well, it's not on charge at the moment because I've actually turned the ignition off while I'm out of the car. So I don't lose my keys or lock them in the car because I don't want to break another window. So I did have to do that uh, a couple of months ago. And, <laughs> you know, I wasn't really happy about that. So mass stand is in place. I took a couple of attempts. All I've got to do is put the mast up and put the antenna on it. Uh, that shouldn't be too difficult around here. And it's not blowing too much. I might get away without guying it or tying it to the wing mirrors, which is what I normally do anyway, what I did with the last car. I've not actually done it with this car yet. So I'll get that all set up and get the antenna on it and see how we're faring with it. Okay, so I've got the antenna up in the air. Now all I've got to do is put it onto the analyzer and see what it's doing. <laughs> <laughs> so the analyzer's in the car and you can see just how long I've made the cable going into it. <laughs> I think I might have made it a bit too long, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm sat in the car now. Antenna up in the air at 27109, which is in CEPT. Yeah, I'm getting about 1.4 to 1. So it's telling me it's a bit, a bit long because if I go further up, it's going to be fun. I've got to somehow try and hold the... the, the Analyzer and the camera at the same time, so I can keep going up the band a bit. There we go. So the SWR, just keep my fingers off. So all the way up CPT is about 1.4 to 1, which means I might need to shorten it a little bit. But that's still usable on even in the older 27 treble 5. So as we're going to UK band, it's about 27 60125 to 279925, that band. So if we go down to six, about 60, 604, 1.6 1 to 1, yes, usable. Usable, definitely. I'm trying to keep the camera. Oops, very difficult to do because I've only got one hand here at the moment. So I don't think I need to adjust that. Because it's 1.99 to 1 at about 28 megs, so I've checked that. So, let's just see if I can focus back on the screen again. Yes, yeah, it's very difficult to do because I'm doing it one-handed. There we go. So, about 2760125, so that's the bottom of the UK set of channels. About 1.6 to 1. So, we'll try this to 2799125. It's about 78125, which I think is about... So, 1.7 to 1 on about 19. And where are we? Nine nine. So it's about one point nine eight to one. About up there. So it's a little bit longer than it needs to be, but fundamentally it does work. So that's what all I needed to know. So that should be fine. So that's the that's the thing working. So all I've really got to do is uh use it. So That'll be then in the next video when I put the Thunderpole T800 2023 on the air. So let's see if I can do that. So I'll catch you in that video if I haven't already. And uh, 7.3 for now. And I hope this was a little bit useful to you. And I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, bonus extra footage. So this is the T800 IO. This isn't the review set. That's over there. So it, it, this antenna is receiving. RF gains up full and squelch is down and then there we go they sound like they're off frequency so I think they're using something illegal so there you go 
talking about using IC7 to 300s on CB, which is probably a naughty thing to be doing, <laughs> but who cares? Random noise, but the sounds of it. It's quiet on the band today. Mostly the usual. Let's go on to CPT. Yep, so we're receiving. Excellent. Right, I'm off this time. Seven, three. Bonus extra footage on top of the bonus extra footage for the T2LT. I plugged it into the T3000. Seems to be working. Usual stuff. The French guys on 18 still that I had in the Thunderbolt T800 video. There he is. <laughs> that was a bit of a spoiler if you haven't seen the Thunderpole T800 video yet. It, it, <laughs> quite a lot going on there. <laughs> Turn it up a bit so you can hear. Go to the CPT set of channels. Interesting, there's a packet going on there. AX25 by the sounds of it. I don't know anyone to do with a, anything like that on here. Go to AM. No American stations today, which is a shame, but you know. Right, back to UK. Turn that down a bit because we know what they're like on channel 19. We can swear a bit and all sorts. So, <laughs> right, that's the end of the bonus extra footage for that T2LT that's outside that I've also been using for review of the Thunderpole T800. The 2023 edition, the third, the third version. And if you haven't seen that video, then it should be on the channel if it isn't already. I'll probably get it up soon.